Hello, everyone, and welcome to our digital days. My name is Marcus Eberle, and I will moderate this webinar today. We are very pleased that you took the time to participate in our virtual conference. Yeah, the topic of today of today's presentation is USB-C from layout to production. Our speaker today is Fabian Altenbrunn, who is working as a field application engineer at Wirf Electronic ISOs. He will hold today's presentation and also will answer your questions later on. So before we start our presentation, I would like to point out one thing. You will be muted during this webinar today. That means that you cannot ask us questions via microphone. Nevertheless, you have the opportunity to ask us the questions via the chat function. You will find that in the webinar control panel. The webinar will be about 30 minutes long. The question and answer session later on, we will also have scheduled time for this. Uh, we will have scheduled five to 10 minutes um, yeah, regarding how many questions we get from you. You will also, and yeah, if we can't answer all your questions within this time, we will answer them via email later on. And if you have after the webinar any questions left, just email us at exhibition at we-online.com. At the end of the presentation, you will be asked to participate in a feedback survey. Of course, we would be pleased if you take the time to help us to improve our webinar and also our virtual conference. You will also receive the link to the presentation in the next few days. The recording will be available at our website shortly. So, and if you have any questions there, just email us. So now I will hand over to our speaker, Fabian, and I wish you an exciting presentation. Have fun. So good morning to all. Thanks, Markus, for your introduction and welcome to the today webinar, USB-C from layout to production. I would like to show first our table of content, our agenda for today. First, we will start with USB-C, USB our product overview. Then with an additional product group, the USB-C SMT spacer. Then we will go deeper to the um, development process to show to you the differential pair impedance calculation, how you can um, uh, adjust the lines to the impedance you want, then the possible placement of, on the uh, PCB, properties of protective components. So we will show some diagrams, then routing tips, and a very important point is the processability to show to you how you can solder or the EMS companies can solder this connector to the PCB. And at least we have a conclusion to show the advantages and disadvantages of this connector. First of all, the USB-C is a connector for different fields. Not only a data connector, it's also open to a field of charging. You can see it here by mobile phone or other devices. Then you can direct, uh, connect also peripherals like um, keyboards and mouses. You have the power delivery mode up to 100 um, watt. And you have also the possibility to share video um, signals via USB-C. The USB type C, you um, can split into product groups. The first product group is uh, the female part on the PCB. It's the receptacle. And then the most time you have it also sometimes on PCB or you have it in the most time on cable is the USB type C plug. You can see it in the left picture here. You have a outside shielding. It's the frame of this USB-C connector and inside you have a plastic tongue and you have both sides. You have on each side 12 pins and on the um, picture below you see the um, what net is on which pin. Then you see on the right side it's um, a little bit different shape. You have a smaller shape here because it must fit into the female part. And then you have not um, contacts on a plastic tongue, you have like spring clamps here that when you push the connector or the PCB to the um, female receptacle, then you have a good connection. And in the middle, you see a schematic or a, a side view from a cable. And here you see how it is built up. So in the middle, you have the 
um, normal pairs and outside you have the most time the differential pairs and also for um, the power connectors. In the side view, you can see it like it will be connected. On the left side, you have only the, the middle part and on both sides, um, you can see it better here, the uh, metal parts. In the middle area of the plastic, there's an additional metal plane. The metal plane has two functions. The first function is to stabilize the um, plastic part. And the second one is to have a better shielding between the top and the bottom level of this connector. On the right side then, there you can see the contact style of the black connector. It's, it's um, formed like spring clamps. And when you push this plug to the receptacle, then you have here the connection between. In this slide, we will show to you which pins with the color code is related to which USB standard. So first of all, you have the um, USB 2.0 standard and all related pins, when you use this connector only with USB 2.0, then you only use the red marked pins. If you um, adjust it to USB 3.0, then you must um, connect also in addition the blue pins. And to, to have the full function of this USB 3.1 Type-C connector, then you use the red, blue, and the green connectors. And the green connectors is added a configuration channel and also um, some parts to have this configuration channel to have the um, voltage here to get the um, communication between. We have um, three different receptacle types at the moment. Um, we have the hybrid version, you see it on the right top corner. We have a different order code and we have two different thicknesses here. Um, with these THR, THR pins here, we have two different pin lengths, 1.5 and 1.9 meter, meter, millimeter. And this uh, belongs to the PCB thickness you need. If you will have too long pins for a THR process, it's not good because you have the chance to push out completely the um, space. And so you get no connection between the pins and the PCB. But the function of the THR process or um, what do you respect, I will show to you later. The material, the plastic material is all SCP. So it's um, linked to the reflow process. So it's approved for more than 260 degree. The maximum rated current for this connector is 5 amps and the nominal voltage is 5 volt DC but it can go up to 12 or 20 volt DC to have the full function of the power delivery. The mating cycles or the durability is um, up to 10,000 cycles. So it's much more than um, you have with the old USB 2.0 or 3 point with the type, type A style. And yeah, and then we have the second version of the receptacle. It's called um, the mid-mount type. It, you can save some space because this type is um, into or this shielding area here is inside the PCB. And so you can save around about one millimeter in the total high. And for small devices, this is really helpful and important. For this, we have only one pin length um, with 1.6 millimeter only for one PCB. So then we have um, uh, third type, uh, vertical type. This is um, different to the two types of the horizontal before. The two types before are some um, mix of SMD and THR. This version is a completely SMD um, product. You have only the four shielding pins, which will be placed as um, pin and paste, but all 24 um, signal pins or voltage pins are soldered by SMD, um, the PCB thickness of 1.2 millimeter is related to the length of the shielding pins, but it's not so important um, to have, you can also use here a bigger PCB with 1.6 millimeter because it's not a signal pin and only for signal pins, you have the requirement from the IPC that you have 0.2 millimeter above the PCB. 
Yeah, the rated current, the rated voltage, and the durability is the same for as for the um, horizontal types, and also the material of plastic is LCP. The opposite part is the plug connector. Here we have no version um, at all for cable assembly. We have only two parts for the assembly as small for small PCBs. Um, here you need definitely a PCB thickness of 0.8 millimeter because this connector is edge mounted. So in the middle of these two pin rows, you have the PCB with the thickness 0.8 millimeter. The difference between our two types is um, you have 22 poles and 24 poles. The 22 pole is related to older um, in circuits because um, in the past, or when we start with the USB-C product group, we have some um, semiconductor manufacturer has not the possibility to um, divide what in which way the connector is assembled. And so with the uh, middle part D1 and D2, or D plus and D minus, um, they can decide, okay, I detect in which way it's uh, assembled or um, stacked to the receptacle. But um, in the last year, we get more and more semiconductors which are able to divide and can detect which side is connected. And so we have the version with 24 poles. So the USB-C SMT spacers are additional product group to our main connector because in the beginning you have only connectors without screws, but um, to use the USB-C in industrial applications or also some, for some um, laptops and monitors, um, they need the screwing to have a better positioning and a stronger holding to the PCB. And here we add um, two products. The first product, you can see it here, is for the bottom side when you have only the single screw version. And um, there you have a different set height and um, where you can place directly into the standard um, the USB-C cable and screw it here. Another way of um, to uh, achieve it is to have it on double screw. So you have in the middle the USB-C connector and left and right you have the both um, of the dual screw spacers. And so you can contact and have on both sides. When you use it like this, so the connector is directly placed on the edge of the PCB, then you can use this one. And also normally the USB-C connector is placed a little bit of in front of the edge, then it's also necessary or possible to use this kind um, because you have both sides the screwing process and it, so it's not able to get a tilt in the connector. But when you use the single screw and you place the spacer on the edge and the connector in front of it, then it can be happened that you, um, during the screwing process, you bring a tilt into the connector and you have a bad connection between the receptacle and the plug. So now we will switch to more electrical parameters, how you can influence the impedance dial. So for this, we have three parameters we can adjust to adjust also on the PCB the impedance for the differential lines. The first parameter is the width of the differential lines. Then you have with the second parameter S, it's the space between these two differential pairs. And the third parameter is the distance or called height between the differential line and the reference plane. So, and in the left, you can see when you increase the height between the ground or the reference plane and the differential plane, also you increase the impedance. When you increase the width of the differential pairs or the differential lines, then you um, decrease the impedance. And when you increase the space between the differential pairs, then you also increase the uh, impedance between. How can set up a microstrip or a differential pair line? The, I would say standard version is the edge coupled. So you have on the bottom side, the um, reference plane, then you have the FR4 and some pre breaks between. And then you have here on top the differential pairs coated with the solder resin. So 
uh, disadvantage of these um, solder resin is that on different parts on the PCB, you can have a little bit different height of this um, solder resin. And during this different height of the solder resin, you have a different epsilon R. And this influences directly the impedance of these lines. So you have the second possibility to get out this uh, impact of the solder resin to have a edge coupled without coating or without resin, but with coating. So you have a coupled uh, standard version, and then you have more or less the ENIC coating on top. And so you have around this differential pair only air, not a second medium. And the air has every time the same epsilon air, and you have not a bit big change um, in the impedance. But the disadvantage of this boat, uh, yeah, this setting is that you have um, during the time you have more uh, issues with humidity and so on, and so you have some outside corrosion, and this also impact year by year the um, impedance directly. And the third one and the most cost-effective one is the grounded cupola waveguide. So you can see it here in, in between or in the middle, you have the differential pair. And around the differential pair, there's the grounded shielding. So you have like a cage around these differential pairs and you have uh, the best communication, I would say, because you have no influence from outside which can uh, have an impact to the impedance of the differential pair. Yeah, next version, you have here some possibilities to have not the strip lines on the top or on the bottom of the PCB. You can also have it in, in the inner layers. There's the typical version, the edge couple. So you have um, like on the top and the bottom, a copper area and the differential pairs on one layer in the middle. So this is uh, very common. The pro side coupled um, is, not so common and it's also more expensive because um, you need between these two differential pairs a re really defined and really flat um, pre prepreg and this is um, you must talk to your um, PCME manufacturer which possibility they have and what is the cost impact. That's not so common but it has also some uh, advantages. Yeah. To have a short conclusion, what I told you before, um, with three parameters, you can have an impact to the right impedance, but um, to check it, it's the possibility to calculate it by hand or with Altium Designer or some additional simulators. It's better to have a, simula uh, a simulation before you go to the PCME manufacturing process um, so that you calculate directly um, the impedance change on the whole PCB. So then, what do you use additional to the USB-C connectors on the PCB to have a good connection? In the uh, left corner behind, you can see um, we choose a common mode filter choke. Um, this is a new product group for us. And you see it's very important to have the filtering by 2.4 gigahertz. It's the same um, area you have all the um, VLAN signals inside and also when you have devices with USB-C, you have most times around this USB-C connector some um, VLAN signals. And so to protect, you use this uh, common mode filter choke to have here a um, better signal. Then you use also on the outside uh, ESD protection, uh, on the inside side, you need um, ESD protection. So therefore we have a standard one, um, which goes up to one gigahertz. This is for lower frequencies. So when you use the connector only like with USB 2.0 signals, but when you want to use it over the whole uh, bandwidth, then you need the other one, the other ESD protection. And you can see it here. Also um, at one gigahertz, there is an impact, but up to 10 gigahertz, it's not so um, decreasing like you have it for the standard versions. 
Then we have two filter sticks available to make some tests and to um, yeah, evaluate some applications for you. The one stick is for power delivery with 60 watt with our ticker number. And also we have a stick for 100 watt power delivery. And these sticks are available by our salesperson. So if you need something, then directly contact your um, responsible sales guy and ask for the stick. Here's it uh, shown the stick. On the left side, we have the USB-C plug connector. On the right side, there's the mid-mount receptacle version to save some height. And this is the incoming side. Here you have the ESD protection. And on the left side, you have also the common mode chokes to protect the differential pairs to have a good signal transmission. Um, and it's like more uh, a transfer model so that you can evaluate your circuits. In this picture is shown um, how it looks like in Altium, which uh, design we use for our filter stick. On the left side, we use a width of 230 uh, micrometer for the differential pairs with a space between of 150 micrometer. And the distance between the differential pairs and the reference play is around 170 micrometer. Yeah, when it's needed to have a switch of the layer. So when you have your connector on the bottom side connection and you must go to top side connection, then you use wires. And to improve the impedance and the differential pair communication, then it's good to place uh, around this wires um, four additional wires to create a wire fence. And with this, it's um, better to have a, the same impedance over all the um, same time of data transmission. Then in the next step, um, what information we can provide to you, which layout information. So we have the yeah, standard possibility to um, present all information in our data sheet. And then we have two libraries, one for Eagle and the second one for Altium, so that you can implement directly our um, libraries in your project and can start with the um, design process. For the mid-mount type, there is a, spe a special remark. <coughs> I will show it to you here and marked in yellow. Normally, um, all dimensions are marked from middle to middle. So, and this is a little bit different because we show the, from the middle of the holes to the edge of the uh, milling area here. It's a distance of 0 0.55 millimeter. But when you create your library, um, component itself, then it's important to not use the 0 0.55 millimeter, then it plays um, the milling line here, the middle, and so we have cut it all here. And you must increase it so to 0 0.8 millimeter if you um, add your library component itself. Then we gave with our application note now some um, proposals to you, how you can design a stencil and what is very important to, for the stencil design. The, the dimension of the holes are really smaller than this because for the um, THR pins, you need more paste um, because you have not the possibility like you have in THT process that with a double wave, the tin come from the bottom side of the PCB and goes during the soldering process to the top. So with the printing process here and the THR process, you must bring the whole solder paste to the um, PCB that you need to have the right um, solder result after it. And the maximum dimension you can bring to the PCB, it's shown here with the 0 0.89 and the 0 0.72 with the width. So here's the hole like this, and you have much more overprinting or the most overprinting what is impossible uh, what is possible and if you have the chance you have um, both side assembling process then it's good to have all in the first step 
um, solder the po on the bottom side so you print only the pads like with this dimensions so you don't assemble the connector you only place it to the pcb and solder it and so then you have a solder the po on the bottom side and in the second process then you have the top printing and the assembling of the process and then it's possible to have a very good solder result to create the right stencils, there is an important fact is the aspect and error ratio. I will explain only the aspect ratio because it's the more si sim uh, simple version. When you calculate the stencil or make the stencil design, then you must respect it because you have the width opening of the stencil in relation to the thickness of the stencil. When this width is too small, then it can uh, possible that the solder paste don't apply to the PCB it's, uh, it left when in the stencil when it lift up from the um, PCB and so you have later on no solder paste on the PCB it's all left in the stencil and with our dimension you can see it here I calculated for 120 standard micrometer and 100 micrometer thickness of stencil and then we have a really good relation in the aspect area ratio the soldering or for the printing process there are some more um, properties are important so you can see it here we recommend a solder type paste type 5 because you can see it here smaller um, grain size is be between so it's more liquid and better to bring the paste inside the hole so in the picture right i will explain it's important that the uh, paste roll during the whole time and during this uh, rolling process the paste drive into the deep <coughs> of the hole with a more liquid one it's possible to go deeper in the pcb and also we re recommend to you to use or apply to cycling processes so that means it start on the left drives to the right and then the second um, squeegee goes down the one first one goes up and drives the second time back <clears throat> for all smd pads there is no impact so you have every time the same filling rate but for the um, thr pins so for the um, in the hole you can bring more paste then the squeegee force you can you have normally 50 newton so five kilogram is the standard pressure and it's good to um, uh, increase it to seven kilo and also the change of the squeegee angle is very good because the standard version is 60 degree <coughs> sorry and with this 45 degrees it's lower and you have more pressure to the deep and so it's uh, allowed to you to bring more paste into the deep uh, exemplary production process is like I explained first print the underside of the PCB to um, have a solder deposit then the reflow soldering then the paste printing process of the PCB top side and um, in addition to it the USB-C connector will be assembled the reflow soldering and at least the AOI inspection here you can see results. These are very good results, soldering without defects. This is like IPC okay, but not um, the best result you can have. You see it here, you have small defects, but you have a soldering and on the top side you have a meniscus. And when you solder by hand, you can see you have no defects, but it looks not so nice like you assembled or soldered by machines. <clears throat> when you make the inspection um, via x-ray then you can see it here without defects <clears throat> you have no air inside the holes and when you use it with def or when you see the soldering with defects then you have here <clears throat> grayer areas and there's air between So the last point is um, the layout 
um, recommendations or um, proposals for our USB-C plug. Here you can see some extractions of our data sheet, but for this process is also more the stencil calculation um, important. The first side and the top side, you reduce the um, stencil opening from a pad width of 0 0.3 to 0 0.2 millimeter. So you can see it here in blue, it's smaller. And you also move the stencil openings 33% from destination back, it's shown here. Why it's necessary? So when you stick the connector to the PCB, then you have here the spring. And when you have uh, in the front directly the solder paste and then the spring clamp came here, then it punches to the left and to the right. And after the soldering, you have only one um, net. You have a big shortcut between all pins. And so when you assemble like this, then you have here the contact point with the pin um, starting with the solder paste and you don't punch that much to the left and right side. And after the soldering, um, you have a really good result. And on the bottom side, so this is the first side you will print, um, you only reduce the pet uh, the sensor opening for percent. You print it in the original dimensions, you solder it so that you have the solder deposit, then you turn the PCB and go to the second side, I, as I explained, and then you um, have the possibility doing the refro soldering that the paste on the bottom side get um, liquid a second time. And then it's, uh, on the top side, they have also the melting process and after it, you have a really good soldering result. Yeah, here you find um, this process. And after it, you see it here, you have a really good soldering after this process. So on the bottom side, you have the solder deposit and um, in the second reflow flow process, it's a second time liquid. And on the top side, you have also the connection. To find all these parameters we talk about, we have in our application node added a parameter table. And in this table, you can find for each product which configuration is the best one we tested. And we show also to you which grain size with um, speed of the squeegee, with uh, angle, with pressure, and so on. And yeah, you can find it here as an overview. And at least we have a conclusion to um, end this webinar today. The Thunderbolt 3 um, brings a lot of function also to USB-C, so you can send more protocols. You can have also the link now more to the Apple devices. Um, the speed goes up, and um, that's not correct. It goes only up to 20 gigabits. Um, you can send not only data in classic, you can also send some um, video signals and you use it as charging device. The mechanical performance is really improved to the old connector styles we have from um, around 500 up to 5,000 case. We have now the possibilities to have 10,000 and 100,000 cycles. We have a higher extraction force, um, extraction force, so it's more stronger inside this connector. Uh, long time reliability. And when we see the RF behavior, it's more EMC protected than the old ones and um, it's suitable for higher data rates. And the electrical performance also increased as I explained before up to five amps and from five to 20 volts. And so I say thank you and gave over to Markus. Yeah, so thank you very much, Fabian, for your interesting pre presentation. At least I found it very interesting. Yeah, um, now we would like to turn our attention to your questions. And so we wait a little until some questions come in. But I see there were also some questions in the meantime of the webinar. So yeah, let's turn our focus to the first question. Fabian, why does the plug have only 22 pins? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think on some slides before, um, as I explained in the past, when we start 2017 with this USB-C um, plug connector, they are not able to have the semiconductor on the um, active side. 
to show to the yeah to the rest of the PCB which side is assembled and in which way the data signals come in. And with yeah, in the last year you have more semiconductors, and we have also the possibility now with our 24 pole version to have the full function of it. Okay, thank you very much for your explanation. Then let's go on. Um, is wave soldering from the recept receptacle possible? It's possible, but it's not recommended because you use it normally as THR component. And I think when you invest more time to the stencil design, then you have a better soldering result. And when you use it with um, THT, you have more or less the fact that in the most case you have shortcuts between so small distance between all pins and it's not good with THT, but it's possible. Okay, thank you very much. Then also as we have a look at the next questions and we will scan them, um, the hint from my side, you will get the link to the presentation later on uh, or the next few days and also we will upload the YouTube link to the recording of this webinar session. So yeah, let's go on with the next question. Is it required to solder the plug or just plug it in onto the PCB? Yeah, it's really important to solder the plug not only to stick on the PCB because um, you have a really high um, or really bad resistance, contact resistance between the PCB and the USB-C plug when you only um, stick it to the PCB and not solder it. Okay, thank you. Then let's go on. What is recommended? Um, what is a recommended stencil thickness? So we rec recommend, um, as I show in one of the last pages, 100 micrometer for the hybrid version, 120 um, micrometer for the vertical version, because for the full SMT vertical version, you need a little bit more um, paste on top of it. But for the hybrid version, it's better to have smaller thickness because you not, don't need um, so much paste on top of it. You need it more in the deep of the hole. And with a smaller thickness, um, you have the chance to bring it deeper, the pressure deeper inside. Okay, thank you very much. Also the hint, if we can't answer your question in the live webinar, we will answer it uh, later on uh, via email. So all of your questions will be answered. And if you have any questions left after the webinar, also just um, email us at exhibition at we-online.com. So yeah, let's go on, Fabian. Are the 10K mating cycles also valid for five amps plus 20 volts? Yeah, it's um, possible or valid also for this because um, here is a yeah, definition. We have no hot plug for these connectors. Um, when you unplug the connector, then it's not possible to unplug it with the full 100 watt. So um, there are some different pin length. And when you um, unplug the connector, then first we'll unplug the configuration channel. And when the configuration channel is unplugged, then also stops the power delivery mode. And so there's no impact with five amp or 20 volts, or if you use it only with 100 milliamps uh, by five volt, there's no difference because the plug and unplug is every time without voltage and without current. Thank you very much. Okay, then let's go on. Fabian, Fabian, do you have USB-C receptacles um, for USB 2.0 devices with a foot footprint compatible with usual mini or micro USB 2.0 receptacles? And also second questions within that, with an internal connection of both sides of the connector and integrated resistors for the CC lines. So for the first point, we have actually no um, USB type C for only um, USB type zero, uh, 2.0, um, but we will have it in some yeah, weeks. 
um, but we have it not in with the same footprint because the footprint of micro USB is um, normally five pins only. We have a 16 pole because you, this USB type C is then designed to use only the um, one differential pair. So the USB 2.0 um, signal transmission, but you have also the possibility to use um, the full power delivery mode. Yeah, and yeah, the configuration channel um, is there inside integrated, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Then I think we come to the last question. Fabian, is the SMT version robust enough for insertion or removal? and maximum maximum mating cycles are requested yeah because it's uh, not a 100 or all pins or all signal and power pins are smd but you have the four shielding pins around and these um, thr soldering process um, improve also the stability of the sole connector and so yeah it's valid enough and robust enough for insertion and removal process okay so thank you very much fabian so yeah now we are finished with our presentation if there are any questions left now uh, we will answer them via email afterwards or you can also send us an email at exhibition at we-online.com so then also just a hint from my side, um, the next topic or the next presentation topic is how can advanced technologies push a sustainable future for production? And yet yeah, it will start at 1 p.m. So thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed it, uh, enjoyed it also. And yeah, um, hope you see Hope you, we see us, uh, we see you on the next presentation and enjoy our digital days. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye. Have a good day. Bye.